Hello, everybody. My name is Terry. We're coming back to our Applied Energistic series. This is part two. If you haven't watched part one, I'll put a link right here for part one. But today we're going to talk about automation in Applied Energistics. So we'll hop right into that. We're going to use an example of OR and we'll get right into it. Now, before I get started, I'd just like to say, if you find these to be helpful, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, all that jazz. It really does help us grow as a channel. So we have two examples here. I've just, last time I made this single core system that has a bunch of channels coming off of it. I, I mentioned that, you know, we, we were planning on color coding it. So all of the blue channels that are coming off, we have 64 blue channels those would potentially be storage and then purple and yellow would be automation of something. So I've started with the most common automation process and that is OR. We have a few things that we need to do to set up for OR and we'll get into those, but it's a fairly simple process once you get the hang of it and we'll get right into it. So there are quite a few different mods in the MC Eternal mod pack. And if you're not using the MC Eternal mod pack, you just need to make sure that you're using two of them. That is Applied in Logistics and Endure IO. Quite frequently, these will be used together. So if you have one, you most likely have the other. Ender IO, we've previously used in the last episode to supply power to our ME controller. And we're going to be using that, plus another one of its uh, partners called the Item Conduit. Thank you, Crows. <laughs> We're going to be using the item conduit, which has a nifty little bit that it can stack within the same block as the energy conduit. Uh, and that's a really particularly powerful bit of Ender IO. So we'll, we'll hop into to what we need here. Um, first and foremost, let me just swap things around here. We will need an item conduit, an ME import bus, an ME export bus, an alloy smelter, a sag mill. Obviously, we need some of our cables. And then we need power to our system. So we're going to hop right into sort of how we wire this. And it'll, it'll make sense in a second. So I'm just going to extend this out one. Uh, and we're going to make one of these for each one of the ores that we are going to process. So for right now, I have one that's set up to process gold ore and one that's set up to process iron ore. And we're going to set one up that is set to process, I don't know. Let's, let's take a look at the ore list and see which one we want to do. Uh, we'll set one up to process diamond ore. How about that? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our sag mill and we're going to place it just off this connection here. And we'll see that natively it does not connect on its own. We're going to do the exact opposite with the alloy smelter. If there's no connection here, don't worry about it. So we're going to take our import and export buses. It's important to know that this is a little bit counterintuitive. We're exporting out of our system. So in our storage, we have materials. We're exporting out of those materials. We're taking those materials out. So we're going to export out of our system. So we're going to use our ME export bus to go into our sag mill. So our plan is to take diamond ore out of our system and then import it into our sag mill. And then we're going to process that ore, pulverize it, send it over to the alloy smelter, and then we're going to import back into our system. So import goes on the alloy smelter, export goes on the sag mill. So let's get down into the, to the wiring of this. So there is a bit of a caveat here uh, that we need to use item filters. Uh, they're not very expensive, but I'll go over them when we get to them. The first thing I want to say is that we need to provide power for each of these things. Um, once we have power, we need to put a capacitor of any type inside the machine for it to be able to accept the power. Uh, these are odatic capacitors. Basic capacitors will work. It does not matter what level it is. As long as you have one, it will start building up power. And that goes for both machines. So 
Go ahead and make sure that you have a capacitor in each of the machines. And we'll have our power set up. I'm just, for the sake of aesthetics, going to place that middle energy one there. Next, we're going to handle our item transfer. So here, we're taking items out. Here, we're taking items out. That's not really an issue. We just always want to extract items out of the sag mill. We don't have to do any filtering whatsoever. If something's in there, pull it out. We'll be good to go. Here, though, we'll start pushing this across. We have specific things that we need to put in and out of our system. And Ender IO has this really awesome thing called an item filter, a basic item filter. It's not that expensive. You can pretty easily make them. But once you make a basic item filter, you can select items that will go in and out of this import into our alloy smelter. So we'll get to which things are allowed to be put in in just a second once we start processing the ore. But we are going to make a copy of them in this item filter and we'll be good to go. One other thing that I, I sort of did while I did that, I set this to always active and we set it to insert. We want to be inserting items into our alloy smelter. So let's go ahead and get some diamond ore and we'll sort of start this process manually. So we have 64 diamond ore here. Not a big deal. We're going to put this diamond ore into the smelter. And we'll see that there's two things that it makes right away. Cobblestone and diamond itself. I'm actually just kind of realizing that diamond ore itself is not really that great of a not really that great of a uh, example because diamond ore doesn't pulverize. So I need to come up with an ore that actually pulverizes. We are going to use the copper ore as an example. And we'll see that it makes a few things right away. It makes copper, cobblestone, and occasionally it makes pulverized gold. So the copper ore makes a couple of byproducts that we need to be aware of. Let me just reset the time here. The copper ore makes three byproducts that we care about. It makes pulverized copper, pulverized gold, and it makes cobblestone. So we want to accept into our alloy smelter those three things. Once that's accepted into our alloy smelter, it will start using up those items. Apparently I just got diamonds for the first time, so that's pretty neat. So the very last step to setting up this and completing this automation process is to handle our import and export buses here. So there's a couple of things that we need. These are capacity cards and acceleration cards. So we'll put three acceleration cards to one capacity card. Now, if you don't already have this set up, we need to put just a couple of things, set up just a couple of things so that our system knows to import it into our, into our ME storage. So we want to accept stone. We want to accept copper from this and we want to accept gold from this oops so this alloy smelter can import gold ingots copper ingots or solid stone directly back into our system and the only thing we have left to do is to set up our ore to properly go. So again, we're going to grab some copper ore. So we have some copper ore. We're just going to set this as our accepted input here. And we're going to put three acceleration cards and again, one capacity card. I'll explain in just one second. So we have copper ore 
coming into our sag mill. It's processed, dumped into our alloy smelter, and then it's put back into our system. So if we put 64 copper ore into our system, we'll see that right away it gets dumped into our sag mill, and then it's being processed here into pulverized copper or stone or whatever the system needs, and it's being dumped back into here. An interesting little addendum is that any time you go through this process, you'll get two ingots for every one ore that you have. And a way to increase that, at least early on, there are better ways to do this later, but at least early on is to take flint and have that go into I just got rid of that. Is to take flint and have that go into as a secondary our sawmill because anytime we put flint into our sawmill, it creates another increase to efficiency and the amount that you get out. So as we're dumping more and more ore into the system, we're getting more and more ingots out. And as you have multiple different types of ore created, all those different types of ore will create different, uh, all those different types of ore will create different pulverization alloys. As long as you set your furnace to furnace only uh, it, it won't mix up you'll still get whatever ingots you need and you'll be good to go there'll be some overlap here like for example an off product of gold ore is to have copper ore that's why you occasionally see this one light up because it grabs the, the pulverized gold or that one can grab the pulverized copper from this one and vice versa. This one can grab the pulverized gold from that one. It does not matter. We can flood the system with multiple types of ore. So let's do some gold ore. We'll grab 64 of that. We'll grab 64 copper ore. And we'll grab 64 iron ore. And I'm just going to dump all three of them into the system at the same time. And you'll see that all three sag mills all begin working on their perspective ore. And all three furnaces begin working, creating their various byproducts and dumping those ingots back into your ME system without you having to do much of the work at all. So that's a very basic setup of automation. Uh, this, this is just ore. We can extrapolate this method to to other various machines from Ender.io or other mod packs as long as you use the import export buses properly. If you have any questions let me know in the comments below. I'm always more than happy to help. You can join our Discord. We have lots of helpful folks there. Next time we're going to talk about how to put this onto a sub network so that we can we can do all of this all six of these channels plus however many more we want onto one network and only cost two channels, maybe four, two or four channels onto our main network. So rather than using six channels or, you know, if as many as 32 to create this, this one offshoot of automation, we can just use two or four depending on the size of our sub network. So be on the lookout for that. We'll set that up next week. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know down below. You can join our Discord. we got lots of people in there. Uh, a lot of them know a lot of stuff about Applied Energistics, Minecraft as a whole. Uh, it's a ton of fun to be in there and interact. We stream on Twitch. You can find more information about that in our Discord or the link in the description below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help us out. And hopefully we'll see you next week.